I get asked all the time how I can have a full-time job, post YouTube videos every week, work on side projects, and still find time to learn new skills in tech, work out, play guitar, read books, spend time with my family and my dog, socialize, travel, and even play video games. So in this video, I'm gonna show you in depth how I manage to get everything done and still keep my sanity. We will talk about concepts like Parkinson's law, boundaryless calendar, zero-based scheduling, second brain, time blocking, and reward-driven organization. I know these are a lot of concepts, so I suggest taking notes if possible, or at least watching this multiple times. Uh, but to keep this video relatable and to make it actionable for you, I'm going to talk about all of these ideas as I plan my own week. That way you will see what those concepts are, why they are important, and how you can apply them in your own day-to-day -day activities. By the end of this video, you will have all the tools necessary to create a robust and effective system that will enable you to get way more done in much less time. With that said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you should do is to set aside some dedicated time once a week to plan your upcoming week and once a day to review your previous day and to plan out your day ahead. For me, this is 30 minutes every Friday uh, morning to plan the next seven days and 15 minutes first thing in the morning to plan out that very day. Next, you will need to figure out what are the most common sources uh, that create action items for you. For me, aside from ad hoc conversations and meetings, the most common recurring sources are emails and events on my calendar. So the idea here is to funnel all of that action items into a robust task management system and then convert those tasks into events in your calendar. This is essentially what time blocking is. Anything that takes less than five minutes to do should be done right away because the overhead of creating a task and filling up your calendar for anything that small will end up being counterproductive. But everything else should be an event in your calendar. And you're probably wondering, creating all these tasks and events for everything is a lot of work, but then I also can't remember all of these because I have a lot of things to do. And you're right, I had very similar questions when I first started doing this. That is why you need to offload the burden of remembering and organizing information from your own brain to a reliable external system that you can trust. This concept of organizing and storing information outside your own mind is called a second brain in the world of productivity and time management. It allows for greater mental clarity for you to focus on higher level thinking and problem solving by taking away the cognitive load of remembering things from your brain. You can use a collection of tools that you trust to build your second brain. Uh, my second brain is comprised of Google Calendar, Superhuman, Notion, and Akiflow. Google Calendar is obviously self-explanatory, Superhuman is my email client, and Notion is my information repository. But what brings all this together and enables me to effectively organize my time is Akiflow. They were also kind enough to sponsor this video. I have been using Akiflow for a while now and I'm a huge fan of the app. It allows you to connect your favorite tools and take care of all your tasks in one place. You can drag and drop tasks, issues, emails, GitHub issues, and items from your various applications all into one calendar and create a perfect schedule. It has powerful analytics and notifications to help you stay productive throughout the day. While I highly recommend Akiflow to everyone aiming to extract out every bit of spare time on your calendar, you don't have to use it to exercise the concepts from this video. Feel free to create your own system of tools if you so desire. I will just be showing you Akiflow as an example for this video. Also, I'll be using a mouse to demonstrate what I'm doing just so you can see, but just know that Akiflow has a really robust keyboard shortcut system to make you even more effective. And that is what I recommend you do if you actually end up trying out the application. Okay, so now that we have our second brain, we need to talk a little bit more about time blocking. Time blocking is a time management technique where you divide your day into blocks of time dedicated to specific tasks or activities. It helps you be more intentional with your time and avoid distractions. Um, time blocking involves creating events on your calendar for everything you need to get done. It's not just about scheduling, but intentionally planning your day. Let's look at my typical week to see how I use my second brain to effectively time block my calendar. I have four types of events that will fill up my calendar. Fixed, flexible, ad hoc, and non-essential. 
The fixed ones are usually preset calendar events that are fixed to that date and time. These could be one-off or recurring. Some examples of my fixed events are daily stand-ups, one-on-ones, and other recurring meetings. I also treat taking my dog out for a walk twice a day as fixed events because I do them at the same time every day. And by virtue of being fixed, these are generally calendar events. So AkiFlow pulls them off my Google Calendar. The next type of events are the flexible ones. These events need to get done, but I can get them done within a certain time frame, and they don't really have a specific date and time. These could also be one-off or recurring. Uh, for example, I try to write the script for my upcoming videos from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I have set this up as a recurring task on Akiflow, but Sometimes I have a meeting early in the morning or a higher priority item for work, so I can move these to a different time or even cancel it if I simply cannot do it. Um, I don't have to make YouTube videos, but I must get some of the other stuff done, especially deliverables for work. Okay, the third type of events are ad hoc events. These are unplanned events that come by as I progress through my week that I need to somehow fit in my calendar. Some examples are follow-ups to meetings, action items that come from emails, fire drills due to bugs in productions, doctor's visits, and other high priority or urgent tasks. So let's look at emails as an example. I use Superhuman as my email client, as I mentioned before. Here you can see that I have an email from my wife reminding me to help her pick a new laptop for her brother. If this stays as an email, it will get forgotten. So the idea here is to turn it into a task or an event and get it into my calendar. With AkiFlow, this is super easy. I have already configured AkiFlow to pick up any email that is marked with the AkiFlow label automatically. So to turn this email into a task, I simply set the appropriate label and I'm done. It's that easy. Now, if you look at AkiFlow, it will automatically pick up this email and set it in my inbox as a task. Then when I'm planning my day or my week, I can simply put that task into a time slot that fits both our needs. So those are the ad hoc events. The final types of events are the ones that need to get done but are super low priority. I like to call them the non-essential ones. These tasks basically just sit on my AkiFlow inbox. If you don't set a time and a date for a task, it automatically goes to the inbox and just stays there. This is where all my labeled emails end up as well. Um, I generally use these tasks to create filler events, which we will talk a bit more about later in this video. But for now, I hope you got the idea of how I categorize all my events into four different types and basically plan out my week and organize everything that I need to get done. But as you look at my calendar, do you notice any issues? Well, there are a lot of empty slots open in my calendar, ranging anywhere from 15 minutes up to an hour. The problem with these scattered open slots is that they aren't long enough to get anything meaningful done, but if you leave them unused, they will go to waste. Why? Well, because of Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is the adage that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. In other words, the more time you have to complete a task, the more time it will likely take to complete it. This can lead to inefficiencies and wasted time. So the idea here is to fill up those small slots with something that you need to get done in the future. This sets a strict deadline to each of your tasks so that Parkinson's law cannot rear its ugly head, but it also frees up time from a future date that you can utilize for something else. And if you don't have anything in the future that fits in this slot, you can also bring in something from your inbox. Remember the non-essential tasks in the backlog? Those are ideal to fill up these spare slots and hence called filler tasks. So for example, if you see here in my calendar, I have my daily stand-up at 10.30 a.m. But on Wednesday, I have this meeting scheduled from 11.15 to 11.45 a.m. And I have lunch at 12 p.m. So I have two small blocks of 15 minutes that are just downtime. They're too small to do anything meaningful, but if I leave them open, the meetings right before those slots would likely overextend because I have nothing else to do. That's inefficient scheduling where time is being wasted, most likely because it can. These small empty blocks are perfect to fill in with those filler tasks. So if I look at my AkiFlow inbox, I have a task here to email Obsessed Garage. I recently bought a pressure washer system from them and I had a couple of questions about it. Um, it's not critical, but I would like to get these answered. So, so I'll simply pull out that task and put it at 11 a.m. 
It shouldn't take me more than 15 minutes to email them, so that's perfect. And then I also have a daily recurring task to check my emails. With YouTube and all, it takes me about 30 minutes to go through my emails, uh, but I only have 15 minutes in this slot left, so what I can do is I can split that task into two different 15 minute chunks. Now I can use one of them to fill my downtime between 11.45 to 12 p.m., and then my calendar is full. And there's a strong push for each of those meetings to end exactly when it's scheduled to. And as a bonus, I get some extra work done. At this point, you're probably thinking, but what if I fill up my spare time, but my previous task takes me longer than expected? Well, if that happens, you split that task and create another task to complete the remaining work and schedule it somewhere else, just like I did with the check email task. The idea here is to never cross your deadline. If you allow yourself the flexibility to go over the allotted time, that will become a habit and you will constantly go over um, your calculated time. It may seem like a bit of an extra work to create separate tasks just for the overflow, but over time you get better at your time estimations as well, so you won't be doing that a lot. And if you use something like Akiflow, creating overflow tasks literally takes only a few seconds. Okay, so we have basically covered the second brain system and the concept of time blocking. Hope this exercise helped you grasp um, how to exactly apply these concepts by seeing them in action. But if you look at my calendar, you will notice that there's one more thing. My calendar isn't strictly divided into work, personal, business, etc. For me, a task is a task. And if there's a potential of wasted time, it's always better to fill it up with any work, regardless of what the category it belongs to. Of course, you must be conscious of the work you are mixing in and be sure not to violate any policies or rules. But for example, if you were planning on getting a haircut on Friday, but you were fully blocked on a task on Tuesday and you have to wait 30, 40 minutes until you get some answers, I don't see an issue in taking care of the haircut to fill up that space so that you have a more contiguous block of useful time on Friday. This concept is called boundaryless scheduling, where you don't set boundaries between categories of tasks. Um, the basic idea is to get everything done by utilizing every minute of your day. Eventually, your goal is to buy yourself more time so you're more effective at everything you do. Having strict boundaries between the types of work you do will prevent you from effectively filling up your schedule. Okay, now I want to talk about one last concept that will put all of this in steroids, and it's called zero-based scheduling. Zero-based scheduling is a time management technique where every minute of your day is planned with no time left unaccounted for. This means that rather than creating a to-do list or trying to fit in tasks around other commitments, you start with a mostly empty calendar and fill it up with specific tasks and activities very intentionally. This allows for greater control over your time and ensures that you're using it as effectively as possible. The key takeaway here is that every minute of your day needs to be scheduled, even leisure and sleep. It may seem odd for a lot of you that I'm scheduling even my leisure time, but the main reason to do that is to combat Parkinson's law so that the task before your leisure time does not seep into your free time or the opposite, where your leisure time does not encourage you to lounge around for hours on end. Now, if the task isn't something you have a clear outcome in mind for, say playing a few hours of video game, then you can just block the calendar as flex time. That's what I personally do. Uh, that means that if nothing higher priority comes up, you can do whatever you please, play a video game, sleep, listen to music. But if something more urgent needs your attention, it will take priority over this block of time. But I will warn you, it is way too easy to consider rest or play a couple of hours of video game as low priority items and keep replacing them with other high priority items, especially if you are a workaholic like me. So I recommend that you treat leisure and de-stressing tasks equally as important as any other task that you have and put them in your calendar intentionally and you will reap the mental benefits in the long term. And like I said, not everything has to be filled all the time. If you're fine losing an empty space here and there, let it stay empty. I usually let 10% of my time go. Um, on some weekends, I'm literally free and I find comfort in not planning anything. The goal here isn't perfection, but consistency and discipline. I would rather have consistently good results 90% of the time than perfect results only 10% of the time. Okay, 
All this probably sounds a bit overwhelming and I wouldn't blame you if you feel that way. Uh, with anything new, there's always some frictions when you get started. Um, I have been doing this for many years and trust me, it will become second nature in no time and you will love it when you start reaping the benefits. Speaking of benefits, I want to give you one last tip to make managing all of this a bit more fun. I call it reward-driven organization. The idea here is to pay a little bit more attention to what you enjoy and what you don't when scheduling your time in the calendar. Uh, the goal is to put the things that you enjoy towards the end of the day or right before the task that you aren't looking forward to doing. That way, once you complete a boring task, you get the reward of a fun task. Uh, if you look at my calendar, I usually have social events or leisure time scheduled right after my workouts. That way, if I feel like skipping a workout, I get the extra push thinking that if I just get through this one hour, I can enjoy the rest of the day as a reward for working out. That also creates a positive reinforcement in your brain. So if you pay a little bit extra attention to how you organize your day, you can make it a lot more exciting and less like a mundane routine. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope these concepts will help you master your calendar and own every minute of your day so you are in full control and don't get overwhelmed by the feeling of not having enough time. Aside from following concepts in the video, if you really want to be even more effective, please give AkiFlow a try. It's a genuinely awesome app. And before you hop away from this video, let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with the rest of the community. Uh, and while you're here, please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.